All warfare is based on deception. All warfare is based on deception. And today, we're going to unravel a deception and talk about the secret story of Makarov in Modern Warfare 2 and the Modern Warfare 2 raids. Vladimir Makarov was revealed to be the villain of Modern Warfare 2 and, as a matter of fact, the orchestrator of everything that happened in Modern Warfare 2. He wasn't revealed until the last couple seconds of the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, however. As all the members of Task Force 141 are sitting around a bar, they pass around a photo of someone that no one really knows who it is, except for one person in the room, Captain Price. And Captain Price reveals to everyone that it is Makarov and he has been planning and orchestrating everything that happened in Modern Warfare 2. Vladimir Makarov was the man who hired the Russian private military company to steal the missiles from Shadow Company. They ambushed the Shadow Company and stole the missiles, and then he turned around and gave them to Hassan, a man who was just as focused on revenge. Although Hassan was not a planner, Hassan has never been a planner in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign. He was just a puppet. He was doing what Vladimir Makarov wanted. Vladimir Makarov gave him the missiles, he gave him the targets, and he gave him the means to smuggle the missiles. Makarov organized the Los Almas cartel and the Alcatala terrorists to work together. He made both sides feel like they were going to get something beneficial out of this alliance. The cartel thought that they were going to get a better chance to make more money, because the United States would be so focused on the terrorist problem, they would ignore the drug problem. And the terrorists were happy because they were going to be able to smuggle missiles into the United States and attack the United States on United States soil. However, behind all of this, Makarov actually had a deeper plan. Makarov organized Hassan to get the missiles and use the missiles, because Hassan was a member of the Iranian military and Al-Qatala. If Hassan used the missiles on US soil to attack US civilians, this would be an act of war because he is a member of the Iranian military. That would be a foreign military coming to American soil and attacking Americans, which would lead to an outright war between America and Iran. However, Iran's biggest ally is Russia, and Russia would not hesitate to hop in and help out Iran. This was all part of Vladimir Makarov's plan to start a war between the United States and Russia. He was manipulating the cartel and the Alcatala forces to accomplish his goal. However, Vladimir Makarov's plan failed epically. The cartel got shut down, their second in command got killed, their first in command was captured by Mexican special forces. Hassan himself got killed, his missiles got destroyed, there was no way that his plan was going to come to fruition. So he immediately went to a contingency, and Makarov wasted no time enacting his contingency plan. After the credits roll, we get a scene on a plane, a Russian airplane, where a man is building a gun out of parts that he stowed around the plane. Once he builds this gun, he gets a text from someone asking if he's ready. He responds ready, and the next text he gets from a man named M is no Russian, which indicates that Makarov already had another plan in place to try to start a conflict between the United States and Russia. In the original Modern Warfare 2 No Russian mission, Vladimir Makarov uses American guns and American ammunition to attack a Russian airport and leaves an American body behind at the airport to make the Russians think that America attacked them and attacked their civilians. This was one of the most violent missions in Modern Warfare 2 history or all of Call of Duty history. And it appears in the cinematic that we get that Makarov has a very similar plan to the original Modern Warfare 2. He's going to have someone attack a Russian airplane with Russian civilians using American lingo and American guns, and he's either going to hijack the plane or he's going to land it at an airport and attack the airport after that incident happens. This is going to prove that Makarov is just not caring about civilians at all. He just cares about enacting his goal. His goal is world war between Russia and the United States. And this all comes from teachings by his mentor, his predecessor, Imran Zakayev. Imran Zakayev was a Cold War Russian oligarch who wanted a war between Russia and the United States because he thought Russia would kick America's ass. But sometime after the events of Modern Warfare 2019, Imran Zakayev dies and leaves his entire empire to his one and only son, Victor. Victor Sakayev tries to see his father's plan through by attacking different points in Verdansk and trying to take over the missile silos there and use the missiles against American targets. However, we know this doesn't work because Captain Price shows up, throws him down the missile silo 150 feet to his death, enters the nuclear abort codes, and the missile never launches. And the Zakaya's puppet, Khalid al-Assad, the man they actually use to invade Verdansk, is just kind of told, go home, go back to Urzikstan and do what you do best. And after the events of Modern Warfare 2019, General Barkov's seat of power, his position as the consultant of the Middle East for Russia, is up for grabs. And from what we understand, the Zakaya family grabbed it up in an instance. So the Zakaya family not only is the consultant to the Middle East for the Russians, they also are the biggest arms suppliers to the Middle East and across the world. And on top of that, they just want a world war. They have money, they have influence, and they have power. And with the two Zakayevs dead, it leaves the position of power open. 
So someone has to step in and fill that, and we know that's Vladimir Makarov, a man who is driven by rage and nationalism. He is the most Russian person you can get. He wants Russia to be the number one in the world. He wants to start a world war because he wants Russia to be number one. He wants the UN to bow to Russia and do whatever Russia wants. However, no Russian was not his only backup plan. He had another backup plan that's revealed to us in the Modern Warfare 2 raid, Adam Grad. The raid starts with a briefing by Laswell that tells us that Alex, or Echo 3-1, went into a bunker system with a couple of forest troops from the Liberation Force. However, they haven't been heard from in a while, and they only got one very cryptic message from Alex during the entire time they were down there. And the message says that the tunnel system goes further than they first thought. So they're going to pursue this and they keep going further, however they have had no communication for a couple of days. This is when Laswell gets Captain Price, Farah, and Gaz to go in and try to find out what happened to try to recover Alex and find out what he was searching for. Upon entering, you start finding out that this is kind of a big nuclear facility. There's something else going on. As you progress through the raid and complete all the puzzles and kill the enemies, there is one thing in there that kind of throws us off. A very specific room in which a chair is shown sitting on the floor with lots of blood spilled around it. And this ties into the very last cinematic we get from the raid. The very last cinematic shows Price, Gaz, and Far rolling up on a bunch of dead bodies and these bodies turn out to be the Liberation Force. However, Alex is not part of them, which means that he might have been captured and interrogated in that room we saw earlier. And after Gaz turns on the lights in the room, it's revealed that all the bodies there are sitting around a Russian ICBM, built by the Soviets over 50 years ago. However, the missile is now defunct. It does not work. However, it still has a working payload. And that is when Gaz, Price, and Farah go to see if there's still a payload on top of the missile. Although we can already figure out what the answer is. There is no payload on the missile, it was taken out of it. But this indicates the next part of Makarov's plan, to use a nuclear weapon against the United States and force Russia and America into a war against each other. However, like I said, this is not the only backup plan he has. He has the no Russian plan in place, and from what we see, it's probably going to go through in the events of Modern Warfare 3 when we first launch into the game. So tell me in the comments below if you're excited for that or kind of disappointed that they're doing a no Russian again. But anyways, there's a bigger story developing. There's going to be more season cinematics for Modern Warfare 2 that are going to push the story further. There's going to be more intel that we're going to be able to collect during Warzone 2, Modern Warfare 2, and all the different areas to push the story even further than that. And we're going to have more story development in Warzone 2. So there's going to be a massive story developing that we're only just getting the very tip of. So if you want all the information for all of your Modern Warfare 2 stuff, all of your Call of Duty news, make sure you subscribe down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and comment and tell me if you're excited for Makarov or not and what you think his plan is, because this is just what we know so far, and there is a lot more information to come in the future. But tell me below, and until next time, I am Iceberg, your Call of Duty informant. Stay frosty.